Hey, welcome back. This is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. I want to talk to you about how to do parallel processing in Studio One. This is one of the things in Studio One that I'm not super crazy about. Uh, I understand why it is this way, but maybe they'll have a solution in a future version. But here's how you do it. So originally in, in, in Pro Tools, for example, if I wanted to do parallel processing on my drums, meaning I want to run my drum mix through two separate auxes and put maybe no compression on one and heavy compression on the other so I have two faders to uh, run them through. Well, the, the way that used to work in Pro Tools was you set all your drums to go to a bus, kind of this internal bus, then you set up two auxes to both receive from that bus. As I mentioned in the last video, Studio One doesn't work that way, and in most cases it's cool. Instead of having that middleman bus that you have to keep track of the name and all that stuff, you just say this goes to drums, and it shows up here on the, this bus labeled drums, right? And has its own fader. I don't have to set the input of this. It's literally they feed directly into it without having to, to have a bus behind the scenes that we're using. So that makes it a little more difficult. If we want to add a bus channel and we want to route the drums to this, there's no real way that I know of to route the drums to this bus and also this bus. So one way to do it, and it's not a super intuitive way, is to create a send on each track that's going to that bus. So let's label this bus. Graham Cochran likes to call it P drums for parallel drums. Uh, sometimes I call it drums two or whatever. Uh, let's, let's try that over here. So here's the kick drum, and we say go to the P drums. And you can tell this to be, uh, what I probably would do is set it to a send level of zero and keep it post fader so it matches what I'm doing here with the fader and then just copy this over to each individual track, right? That's one way to do it. It's kind of clunky, I'll be honest. I don't do it this way uh, because it, it lacks a little bit of control, right? It, it's, it's just not super ideal. The other way to do this, and I'll remove these or turn these off, is to simply do a send off of your drum bus itself. So we could just send the entire drum mix like this to the P drums. We could even do a pre-fader send so I can have adjust this volume without affecting the volume here. The downside of that is as it works, I believe what gets sent on this send is the signal after it goes through any plugins you have here. So if you wanted this to be have some compression and then something different over here, that compression would also be present over here. That may or may not be a bad thing, but that might not be ideal for you as well. So that's one thing to do. One thing I do a lot of now with drums specifically is I'll just send maybe kick and snare to this parallel track, right? I'll use a pre-fader send, send just the kick and snare, a copy of them over here, and then heavily compress or EQ that and blend it in. So it's not, a, a, it's not true parallel processing in the fact that I'm processing the entire drum mix on two channels, but honestly, I don't do that that much anymore. So it's not as big of a deal as I first thought it was, if that makes sense. The easiest way to do parallel processing, if you can get it to work for you, is to get rid of this track entirely. Bye-bye. Yes, get rid of you. And then look over here. If you use the stock plugins in Studio One, this is a breeze. Most of the time, parallel processing comes in the form of compression, a lot of times for me. So I drag a compressor onto this track. Now look what I can do. I can set it up with some really aggressive compression. Let's take a listen. Let's just go over the top. Why not? For funsies. Maybe with a faster attack, too. Okay, we would agree that's a ridiculous amount of compression, but what would that sound like mixed with the dry signal? Well, Studio One gives you this nifty little mix knob on most of their plugins that allows us to do that. I pull it all the way down to zero, guess what? That's dry drums. Then I drag it up to 100, and guess what? It's completely compressed. Now listen to what happens when I blend it. I can go to 50% if I want, or I can just kind of noodle around until I find that happy medium. Listen to what that sounds like. Pretty cool, right? Turn it off. Turn it on. Very, very, very cool 
that it allows you to do that. So really the 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 gripes that I have with PreSonus about not being able to make that easier with creating a second bus, they kind of go out the window because I can do that with their stock compressor. Now, if you use a different compressor that doesn't allow you to do that, that stinks, but I found their compressor sounds just fine for this sort of thing. Here's a final mix that I did using this exact approach, uh, and listen to the drum mix here. Um, I did the same thing. This is a mixed drum kit as opposed to just a dry kit, but look, I have the mix set to 38%. And I'll turn it off first, and then I'll turn it back on. Listen to how much better it sounds. It just tightens it up, gives it some of the goodies, the goodness of compression without it having to be over the top compressed because we're only hearing, you know, the mix knob's over here at 38%, so we're hearing mostly dry signal with some compressed blended in. Then to top that off, I mentioned this earlier, look at this track right here. This one's called the Snap Track. I've got just the kicks, snares, and the room mics feeding this track. And listen to what that sounds like. I've got way heavy compression and some pretty dramatic EQ. That sounds like this. Gives me a lot of snap. Blend those together, here's our drum sound. Anyway, I got a little, little, little bit of a tangent there, but I wanted to show you that in a real life song. So hopefully that's exciting for you. Maybe you've never experimented with parallel processing. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble, but you can also do some really cool stuff. So check it out. Don't go overboard. Have fun. See you in the next video.